Hey George, so just going to show you quickly how to begin modelling bike in ZBrush. This I've just launched ZBrush, this is what it should look like when you launch it too. So the first thing we want to do is import our reference images. So in your case that would be photographs of the pet you made out of wire. In my case what I've done is grab a couple of reference images on the internet, so a side view and a top view of the bike. Um, the more reference images you have, the better. So like you could also have a front view, a rear view, all that kind of stuff. But for me I'm going to be working just with a top side view. You could even possibly get away with just working with the side view, uh, but the more reference you have the better. So if we go into ZBrush, we're going to want to import those reference images. So to do that you go to Texture, Import, you're then going to select your bike, so I'm going to select side view, press open. Uh, so mine was, all, I've already done this process, so mine already, once you've done that, it will. Then you're going to go to draw and scroll down a little bit. Actually, what you want to do as well is just make sure you have switched on. Press this floor button, and you have this little tiny, there's these little tiny buttons within the button that say X, Y, Z. Just have those switched on. Uh, one thing that I also want to do, sorry, is just switch off. At the moment, we're looking at the document with perspective view. Just want to switch that off. So we're looking on it with a very straight view. Back to that draw menu. And then we want to go to front back. I'm going to select map one. I'm going to select your side view. Put it into the document. Just zoom out a little bit. I'm just zooming out by using the, the little navigation button here. Well, you could use the shortcut on the keyboard. I then want to, want to import my top view. So again, texture, import, select your top view or whatever view it is. It's open. Say for me, I already had loaded it in, but it's this one here. Then I'm going to go back to draw, scroll down a little bit, go to up down, map one, top view. Now if I pull in the grey area and look down, I have my other reference image. So I now have my reference set up. Um, along with this video that I'm making, I'm going to send you a more in-depth video about reference images and how to adjust them, scale them, um, just in case when you are taking your photograph things aren't scaled all equally. You know, my reference image the top view and the side view are scaled equally, so when I've imported them, I can just get going with the modelling. Yours might not be that way, so there's a video uh, that I'll send you uh, along with this one related to how to deal with those uh, instances, but for now I just want to show you the side of things. So, let's have a little look at our workspace. So when it comes to mapping this out, we're going to be using what I call, or what's called, primitive shapes. So we're going to be using um, cylinders mostly uh, in order to create this bike shape. And the aim of this really is to just mark out the form. I'm not interested in doing details at the moment. I just want to mark out my form. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Subtool. And subtools are basically your kind of layers in ZBrush, let's say. So if you want to draw a comparison to Photoshop, the various subtools would be the same as the various layers. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is append, and I want to select a cylinder through. Press it once, brings it into my workspace. So you can select which subtool you want to be active in. So at the moment I'm in the polysphere. If I click down, I'm now in the cylinder. I don't need the sphere 
to be in this document. I'm not going to bother deleting it. I'm just going to switch off its visibility by pressing this eyeball. Now what I'm going to do is work with this cylinder. So to manipulate the cylinder, we're going to use these uh, modifier buttons up here, move, scale, rotate. Okay, so I'm going to start off just clicking it once. This thing that's appeared on the screen is called a gizmo 3D. Again, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about this, uh, this thing here. <laughs> I'm just going to show you how to use it for this purpose. But I will also send you a video which goes more in depth into how to use a gizmo 3D. In fact, I'm going to write a note to, to make sure to include that. Gizmo 3D reference. Okay. So that's my Gizmo 3D. If you've ever used a 3D modeling software before, you might be kind of familiar with this. Sometimes it's called a gimbal, and it's how you can kind of modify, rotate, scale, form within a 3D space. So if I pull on the outside edge of the sphere, for example, if I begin to pull on that blue one, you'll see it begins to rotate round. If I hold, if I tap shift while doing that, it will lock to the nearest angle. Yeah? So again, just to show you, if I'm pulling around with the blue and I press shift, it will lock to a side angle. And I can do the, I could move the red one and also the green one. And it will just be rotating around that axis. Okay, so I'm just going to press Control Z to undo back to it straight on, and I'm just going to make sure that this is at a nice angle. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to start with is like the crossbars and all the like main structure of the um, the kind of bike frame. So those outside edges rotate. These inside kind of rectangles, so the green, red, and the blue, they modify, so they stretch. Okay, So if I pull on the green one, it's going to stretch along this axis. If I pull on the blue one, it's going to stretch along that axis. And if I pull on the red one, it's going to stretch along this axis. Okay, I'll we'll just undo that, Control Z, Control Z. If I want to scale, so rather than scaling along this way, or along this way, or along this way, if I want to scale uniformly, for example, to get a thinness to the cylinder, similar to this, you're going to want to pull that central yellow square, and that will scale uniformly. Okay? So if you pick just one of these, it will scale in that particular direction. If you want to scale equally, go for the yellow one. All right, so what I want to do is get it kind of similar thickness to the bike frame. The arrow heads are for moving. So if I pull on the red one, I can go up and down. If I pull on the green one, back and forth. Pull on the blue one, left and right. Okay, so I want to kind of get this bar in the right place. So I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to use a blue one to get it in line with the uh, bike, bike bar bit, and I might zoom in, and I might then adjust the scale using my central yellow cube, uh, so, yeah, yellow cube, scale it down to be something closer to the bike, to the width. Remember you're working in three dimensions, so even if something looks perfect from this side, if you then turn, zoom out a bit, it, it's completely not in the right position, right? So I then need to use this red arrow head to move it up, Looks like I've tilted it slightly. It's fine. I'm then going to use this green one to stretch it out. And you see it's only stretching it out. It's not making it wider or, or taller. It's just stretching it out when I pull that green one. I've got it slightly taller. So bring it along. And just remember, we're doing it kind of roughly. You know, we're getting it, you know, as accurate as we can, but we're doing it 
you know, we're not getting too crazy about the details right now. First part in. Now, because there's quite a few of these kind of cylindery shapes, what I can do, rather than appending in a new cylinder, I could actually duplicate this one, right? So duplicate. I'm now in this new subtool. And then what I could do is drag my blue line or this outside line here. And I'm just going to begin to position stuff, right? Scaling, positioning. Again, not too fussed about where things join. At the moment, all I want to do is just mark the shape. In. That's the whole point of what we're doing right now. Let's just do that. Duplicate it again. Spin it around. If I spin and hold shift, it will lock it again to an angle. So that can be good if, if you know that your angles are kind of like 45 or 90. You know, rotating and then pressing shift is going to really lock it. It's a really good way if you need something to be perfectly straight up or to the side, right? Or at a kind of angle like this. Up again. Open that. Up. Duplicate it again. Spin it around. And you can see, like, pretty quickly, we can start to mark out this bike. It's kind of beginning to take really. Again. Pulling with the arrows. Old bike frame is looking at the moment. Switch the reference back on, press the floor. If you want, you can begin to name these. So go to the top one, you'll see it, it changes to being slightly highlighted. Go to uh, rename. So we call it crossbar. We could actually merge these into one tool actually and call this frame maybe. So let's take that top one and just merge it so that all, all of these five will be combined into one subtool. So merge, push down, down. See the preview of the subtool, so change it. Let's call that like frame. Okay, so now let's maybe focus on some of these uh, the detail-y bits. So append. Cylinder. Make sure we're in the correct subtool. If I just started pulling this now, it's going to be adjusting the frame. So make sure I'm in the correct one. Same again. Let's get this kind of scale. I'm going to work a little bit faster now. So Checking my works. working three dimensional, so I want to duplicate that, rotate, hold, shift. This bit's a little now, if you watch the video about the Gizmo 3D it's going to show you some other handy things. So for example, at the moment when I'm scaling, it's scaling from the middle, top and down equally, okay? Which is why when I'm scaling, I'm then having to kind of nudge it up and down. That Gizmo 3D video that I'll send you, will show you how to make it so, for example, when you're scaling, it's starting from here and only scaling downwards, or you can set it so it starts from here and only scales upwards. And that is a lot faster because then you're not having to nudge up and down, back and forth, okay? So again, just check the positioning. Zoom in if you need to.
my top view. So we've got a kind of crossbar here that we can do. So how about we duplicate again? Spin around. Oh. <laughs> Holding down shift to get it to be completely straight. But zoom in. It's a little bit big, babe, maybe. So we just down a little. Let's just stretch this out. My image is on just because this crossbar there. Maybe they're not perfect. There, it looks very aligned, right? Go up. Back. Yeah, they're not perfectly. Yeah, I think this top view is slightly scaled. But anyway, let's just carry on. For the uh, wheels, you can also use a cylinder. Again, you could either just mod, mod, oh, sorry, manipulate one of these, or you could append cylinder, down, rotate, spin to the side, round, shift, dip. Okay. So again, really marking out the bike. So we're going to keep nudging and changing as we go, right? So one thing that I've realized is that obviously this downward bar is actually two bars that come down together. So what we can do is go back, say split, group split, let's grab the sidebar. This is when labeling it. <laughs> we can say move. And again, this is when it's handy to have really good reference. Duplicate. Slide. Duplicate. And so you see, as you go, as you go along with the modeling, you're going to be tweaking and revisiting, like re um, aligning stuff. If at any point your Gizmo 3D is like at, in a crazy place to the object you need to edit, Press the unlock, press go to unmesh, unmesh center, and then press reset orientation. Close the lock again. Adjustment. That Gizmo 3D video I'm going to send you will explain those details a little bit in detail. Um, I just want to get this kind of started at the top. If you're really zoomed out and you want to zoom back in, if you press F, it will frame the subtool. If you press F again, it will frame all of the subtool. Okay? So that's a really good way. If you accidentally zoom really far in or really far, far out, press that F key. It's the same as this one, but it's a shortcut. 
definitely. Okay, so we're going to just keep going. Grab that front one. Let's pick one. Oh, there we go. That's a front. Let's call it front. So again, side. Okay, side. Grab this little edge down, wrist loops. So I'm just renaming stuff so I can know like what's what. This you get to this edge, this one. Forward, it's just this little bar. This one is the rear spokes, and that's the little crossbar of it. So again, I could move that down. So we know that that's the whole rear spoke section. It's part of the front. Merge down. Spoke. The side one. F to zoom in. Position's OK. And again, so you're going to have your reference images pulled. Um, but you could also have the maquette that you've made and actually be looking at the maquette specifically to, to figure this out. OK, so you're basically going to just continue building up your frame in this method. Um, let's real real. And I think for a majority of the bike, at least to start with, you're going to be able to just work with like cylinders. So for example, I could duplicate this, move it, scale it. Pick what side pins to sit on. I can't remember off the top of my this image it's on the left. And then you can even start to you know, duplicate that, begin to build up a little bit more detail. Again, do another sort of set of cylinders for this. For the, for the pedals, for example, so let's call this is. For the pedals, you could append in cube. Make sure you've got the cube selected. Exactly the same, just deforming it using the rectangle. So squishing it down, forward. Just begin to figure out that shape. Duplicate. I'm raising my summary. Big, big. Oh, it's because my things are different scales, aren't they? Yeah. 
Oh, I need to sort that out. Yeah, it's just starting to place everything. Um, for the pedal mechanism, again, a append cylinder. It's just like pedals. This one. Spin it round. Push more. You can always switch off stuff if it's blocking your view. So like the gears are blocking. So just switch the start to stuff on. Okay. that. All that stuff is touching. It's really beginning to build up the shapes, really. And I'm currently positioning these like probably they're on like the same plane and they'll be moved and adjusted uh, in another direction um, to match the bike. But for now, just focusing on this top down view. And then when I turn to the side, I can begin, I can unlock, for example, set. And begin to figure out like how that pedal mechanism actually works. Something. I don't know exactly how <laughs> pedal mechanism works, but yeah, you know, just start to position everything. Seems to me like it's a bit. Yeah, I can make this whole thing. Yeah, I think I need to do a fair bit of maneuvering with that. <laughs> but yeah, you get what I mean. You can just begin to build up, build up your shapes. I think I've managed to royally screw that up. I think I need. What is it? So there's a. Oh, I have managed to screw. Exactly know what I did. Well, like, well anyway, <laughs> if you completely screw up, like I just have, just delete it. <laughs> And start that bit again. So it'd be a cylinder coming out, coming along, down, out to the pedal. I think having an extra once this would be scaled, and maybe having a radio image as well. It'd be easier to see all those elements. Once you've built them in. Once you've placed everything. I'm just going to show you how you can begin to then kind of merge it together. So let's take, for example, let's get rid of the wheels for now and the pedals and stuff. Let's just look at the frame. So what I want to do now is merge down. I want to merge all my frame together.
and only do this once you've really got all your primitive shapes together. So once all of this is kind of mapped out is when you want to start doing that shape now. Make sure you also save. And you do that under file, save project here, like save as, don't do it under document. Document saves a 2D image. You need to do file, save as. So if I just switch off my reference image, I look at my bike frame. If I switch on polyframe mode, what it's showing me at the moment is that my frame is made from lots of different cylinders and they're not actually merged yet. They're kind of like separate elements that overlap with each other. To merge them, we're going to perform something called a dynamesh. So we're going to duplicate this one, switch off the... We're going to go to geometry, dynamesh, switch off blur, set our resolution to 400, dynamesh. We'll see now that the surface has changed from, I'm just going to use a timeline, from these like large squares, like sorry, large shapes, 5,000 active points. It's now switched to a small grid with a high active point count. And actually now these cylinders have kind of like welded together. At the point that they're welded, you can actually come in now and use your brushes on the bike. So you could take like your move brush, for example. You could actually begin to you could actually begin to use your brushes on this. So I'm gonna just switch on symmetry. Useful symmetry across the bike. <laughs> left or right, vocal switch down. Um, yeah, you could begin to then use your brushes this, and begin to give your bike a bit more form. And again, you could use a reference to help with that. Uh, for example, if you'd imported a shape here, then use the move brushes once it's dynamic build in shapes. You can also use your smooth brush. So here where you've got all those kind of visible joints, if we make our brush a lot smaller and hold down shift, you can actually begin to smooth everything into itself. It looks nice, right? If you've got any weird areas, for example, here, I would just use clay. A bit of clay, let's move it back again. You know, now what you've got is this kind of bike frame, but you've now converted it into an object that can be smooth. Use, for example, flatten brush into the Soften the details in. Now begin to really manipulate on smooth areas out. Get rid of any edges. You can begin to really, yeah, sculpt this now. <laughs> We've gone from the basic mapping out to actually now having something that we can begin to round with. Um, without the whole thing, get rid of all those strides. If at any point, say you were going to do something super crazy, so let's use the inflate brush. Say you were making like a super crazy bike and you began to inflate this. If the surface begins to break, like with these fragmented parts, like begins to stretch, turn a mesh off, turn a mesh on, it's going to rework that surface and allow you to smooth out. So whenever you feel like something is beginning to fragment, turn a mesh off, turn a mesh off, come back in with your smooth brush. That fragmentation is caused by you stretching the surface. Yeah. If you want to, if you and if you keep doing that, it will really like 
begin to like damage the model. You know, it becomes really super crazy. If you want to be able to continue sculpting, done it off, done it on. It's like having infinite clay, basically. Yeah. Um. Cool. So oh, now we've got like a crazy blob bike. But yeah, if you want to, yeah, have a go at that. Let me know how you get on. And uh, yeah, good luck with building the bike. And give me a shout if you have any issues. You can also use this same thing of primitives in order to map out the people in your scene. Um, you know, you can append in uh, like spheres, for example, and you can actually use the same um, sort of method to like mark out bodies. Um, I don't really want to rush this because it's going to look super rubbish. But yeah, you could begin to map out, uh, you know, like human figures, for example, um, pretty fast. Again, I'm just using like um, duplicate. But my scale here is like super wrong. <laughs> but yeah, you could begin to like map out. Um, your figure as well, like your person, using this. Again, dynamic shit together, begin to etc. Cool, let me know how you get on.